the prayer request for the Holy Spirit. Um, Lord, we need the Holy Spirit, a uh, double portion, Lord, we need an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Because your Spirit is one that guides us into truth, convicts us of sin and of righteousness and of things to come. So I'm praying for the Holy Spirit. I'm praying for um, also those um, who went out and did outreach, um, the people who have been reached, um, the people who have been uh, made contact. I'm praying for them too, that you may be with them, and that you may soften the heart to receive your message of truth. Um, Lord, turn their hearts from a rock from, to a heart of flesh. Um, I lift them up to you, Lord. I don't know all their names, Lord, but you know every one of us because we are your children and you number our head, the hairs on our head. Um, Lord, I'm seeing, um, playing for Berlin and, and what's happening there, Lord. Um, I'm not too sure, Lord, but you know exactly what's happening. Uh, and Lord, you care for us. You tell us, Lord, that we should come to you if we're heavy laden and you'll give us rest. And that's a promise, Lord, and you're not a man that you shall lie. So Lord, I lift Berlin up to you right now. Um, Lord, I'm praying for all the essential workers um, wherever they may be around the world. And those are the ones who are fighting this disease, Lord. Be with them. I'm asking for protection. I'm asking um, for your covering um, about them. I'm asking for your Holy Spirit to be upon them, Lord. Um, they may help them and keep them safe as they fight this disease that is taking so many lives. Um, Lord, I'm praying um, for also um, our friends and family, Lord. You know, especially our, our family, Lord. It can be so hard to to reach those in our family it seems even harder, Lord. But Lord, we're asking that you may soften our hearts and give us, continuously give us opportunities um, to be able to reach them and to show them who you are uh, through our words and also through our actions. Um, Lord, there's many prayer requests that we see um, flooding in now, Lord, and you know them all um, before we even utter them. And we know that you are faithful um, and you're not, um, you hear our prayers, Lord. So thank you so much for um, being our high priest once again, Lord, and for being up there listening as our prayers ascend up um, up to you in the sanctuary. Lord, we pray all this in faith, knowing that you would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. We pray this in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Um, definitely be keeping uh, everyone in prayer. Um, you all, I'm sure you can all see uh, all the prayer requests in there. So um, please keep each other in prayer. And as we continue praying for one another, um, it's a powerful thing, prayer is, especially as we come together. So uh, let's continue to do that. Um, I would just like now to invite um, Dr. Ryan, Dr. Michael Ryan, who is the general vice president for our world church and uh, he will be giving us um, the greeting message uh, tonight um dr ryan are you there i am can you hear me i can hear you clearly um <laughs> uh, very good i i just bring greetings to all of the gyc asi people who are listening to this broadcast and uh, greetings from the general conference and from the world church it's exciting to think that there are people right now listening from Asia, from Africa, Europe, the Americas, and the little islands around the world. You know, so many times uh, the news, they make money because they cover all the bad things that are happening. And we know them. The list is long. We are a, a world that lives in crisis. There are wars. There's pandemics. There's this. All kinds of things that we can focus on. But I want to assure you uh, this evening that you also are living in a world where there is good news, not only the hope of the gospel, but the fact that evangelism is exploding around the world, even tonight. We have had reports of millions that have become part of evangelism meetings that are being conducted online. And we have a lot to be very, very thankful for. And uh, there's a passage which you're very familiar with. I'd like to share that with you in my greetings from the World Church. 
And if you have your Bibles, turn to it. Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter and verse 6. And these terrific words come to us. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor will he forsake thee. And uh, I think these are encouraging words for this time. Opportunity is everywhere to share the good news of the gospel. And you know, this church has been called to a very special time. I want to share also, just briefly, a quotation uh, from the Maranatha devotional book. It's a statement by Ellen G. White, but it's on May 1, page 129. And uh, Ellen White says, God has a church upon the earth who are his chosen people and who keep his commandments. He's leading not a stray offshoot or just one person here or one person there, but he is leading a people. And there's no need to doubt, to be fearful, that the work will not succeed. God is at the head of the work and he will set everything in order. What a tremendous promise for this time. Because you know, as we live at these end times, right before Jesus comes, this church has a special job to do. And I think that as I bring greetings from the world church, you can rest assured they're caring for that special task. And they are praying that you also will care for that special task. Let me just share in closing of my greetings, one of my favorite quotations, because this focuses on the central business of the church. It's exactly what we should be doing. And it's taken actually from the ninth volume of the testimonies on page 19. And Ellen White says these words. In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. Now, that, that's a pretty special task. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import. The proclamation of the first, the second, and the third angel's messages. And then she says these words, there is no other work of greater importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. You know, it's nice when we have divine counsel about our central focus. I believe with all of my heart that these quotations and these words of encouragement are spoken to the GYCs that are scattered around the world, the ASI conventions scattered around the world, because I believe that we are all part of a people where God is directing. And my prayer for you at this ASI meeting and this GYC meeting is that the Holy Spirit will fill our lives, guide us, direct us, encourage us, and set us in the direction of heaven's will. And that's my greetings to you from the World Church this evening. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Oh, brother, be faithful. Soon Jesus will come, for whom we have waited so long. Oh, soon we shall enter our glorious home and join in the conqueror's song. Oh, brother, be faithful, for why should we prove unfaithful to him who has shown? 
such deep, such unbounded and infinite love, who died to redeem us his own. O brother, be faithful, the city of gold, prepared for the good and the blessed is waiting its portals of pearl to unfold and welcome thee into thy rest then brother poor faithful not long shall we stay in weariness here and forlorn time's dark night of sorrow is wearing away we haste to the glorious morn O oh, brother, be faithful, he soon will descend, creation's omnipotent king. While legions of angels his chariot attend, and palmries of victory bring. O oh, brother, be faithful, and soon shalt thou hear thy Savior pronounce the glad word. Well done, faithful servant, thy title is clear, to enter the joy of thy Lord. O brother, be faithful, eternity's years shall tell for thy faithfulness now, when bright smiles of gladness shall scatter thy tears, a coronet. Sure that waits for the faithful and try to reign with the ransomed, immortal and pure, and ever with Jesus abide. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be lead. And Christ in Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obeyed. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day, ye that are his now serve. Unnumbered foes, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, he dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watch him unto prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never Stand up, stand up for Jesus, 
Kongresy ASI to zawsze jest wielkie wydarzenie. To jest jeden z niewielu zjazdów, na którym potrafię nakarmić się duchowo i jadąc tutaj wiem, że wyjadę z bagażem wielu doświadczeń, a mój notesiek w Biblii będzie zapisany wieloma e, zapiskami, więc wiedziałam już, że doświadczę czegoś naprawdę niezwykłego. Zawsze jest miejsce na coś jeszcze więcej. Więcej modlitwy, więcej studium, więcej służby. Więcej oddania. Wtedy będziesz mógł posmakować moc Celem przyjechania tutaj było głównie to, żeby rozwinąć się duchowo. To było najważniejsze, bo w życiu codziennym nie masz aż tyle możliwości, żeby spotkać tylu adwentystów i spotkać tylu fajnych ludzi. Ale też, żeby spędzić czas razem z, ze znajomymi i z rodziną nawet. Chciałem usłyszeć Słowo Boże, ale również chciałem przyjechać tutaj ze względu na to, że ASI jest to organizacja, która wspiera finansowo wiele projektów misyjnych. Dlatego byłem bardzo podekscytowany z jednej strony i wykładami, a z drugiej strony możliwością też wsparcia finansowo ASI oraz bycia tutaj razem z innymi. Na tym kongresie bardzo podobała mi się muzyka, wykonawców było bardzo dużo zespołów, którzy naprawdę widać, że są w pełni profesjonalni i wielbią Boga wykorzystując swoje talenty, ale patrząc z tej strony bardziej duchowej, wykłady głównego mówcy dały mi bardzo dużo. Myślę, że potrzebna nam jest wiedza na temat pewności zbawienia, o łasce i powinniśmy to doceniać i być tego pewni każdego dnia. Praktycznie zaczęło się to nawet więcej niż 12 lat temu. Zaczęło się w Roberta Głowie 20 par lat temu, gdzie zabrał mnie do Stanów na taki kongres, żebym też zobaczył to. Ale faktycznie 12 lat temu byliśmy w Bratysławie i tam zrozumiałem w ogóle ideę ASI, jak to działa w Europie. I przez dwa lata praktycznie był ten czas przygotowawczy, więc 10 lat temu był ten pierwszy kongres. Za nami już dziesiąty kongres ASI. Z perspektywy czasu, patrząc na to wszystko, aż trudno w to uwierzyć. Gdy zaczynaliśmy, wszystko wydawało się takie bardzo trudne, żeby w ogóle pierwszy kongres zaistniał. Potrzeba było mnóstwo przygotowań, mnóstwo wysiłków, ludzi, którzy by się w to zaangażowali. Dzisiaj możemy już patrzeć na pewne wyniki tego. Mamy za sobą wiele bardzo ciekawych projektów, takich, które by nigdy nie zaistniały, gdyby nie pomoc uzyskana podczas kongresu ASI. Jesteśmy za to Panu Bogu bardzo wdzięczni. Dla mnie był to szczególny kongres, nie tylko dlatego, że jubileuszowy, ale właśnie dlatego, że doświadczyliśmy kolejnego cudu. Rekordowa liczba ludzi, która była obecna, ale też i rekordowa kwota, którą zebraliśmy po to, żeby realizować kolejne projekty w następnych latach. A wierzę, że te projekty się pojawią, ponieważ widzę ludzi, którzy są zainspirowani i zachęceni do tego, żeby realizować swoje marzenia misyjne. Dla
dla mnie inicjatywą, w której wszyscy ludzie, którzy naprawdę chcą służyć Panu Bogu, którzy mają, którzy mają jakieś pomysły, jakąś, jakąś wizję, mogą ją zrealizować. Czy może często problemem są środki finansowe? To stowarzyszenie pomaga rozwijać to Boże dzieło. Nawet naprawdę przy różnych płaszczyznach, nie tylko stricte książki, wydawnictwa, ale też naprawdę bardzo kreatywne pomysły, dziedziny zdrowia, muzyki, mediów itd. Więc chwała Bogu za to, że są tacy ludzie, którzy mają takie pragnienie, wykorzystują też swoje talenty, żeby w taki sposób właśnie, z taką organizacją zdobywać te środki. Czasem są ludzie chętni, którzy chcą wkładać pieniądze, którzy chcą też przyczynić się w ten sposób, jaki mogą, tak? Finansować jakiś projekt. ASI dla mnie to jest takie miejsce, gdzie właśnie przede wszystkim można się zainspirować do zrobienia czegoś, ale to jest też taki tak naprawdę inkubator różnych pomysłów, różnych inicjatyw i bardzo bym chciała, żeby młodzi ludzie wiedzieli, że coś takiego jest i że można z tego korzystać, żeby te różne super pomysły wspierać i rozwijać. Kiedy patrzę na ten dziesiąty kongres ASI i działalność ASI, widzę niesamowity postęp i to, w jaki sposób Pan Bóg no, używa ludzi i realizuje różne projekty, które są niesamowite i coraz ciekawsze. Na tym kongresie podjąłem decyzję, żeby reaktywować kanał Odkrycia TV. Warto wykorzystać ten zasięg, żeby dotrzeć do ludzi z nowymi treściami. Na pewno z tego kongresu wyjeżdżam z taką ochotą, pragnieniem modlitwy. Chciałabym być bardziej otwarta na głos Boga i bardziej odważna. Z czym ja wyjadę? Na pewno, żeby kontynuować, na pewno, żeby jeszcze lepiej to robić, żeby jeszcze więcej ludzi zapraszać, żeby jeszcze więcej ludzi mogło przeżywać z nami to, co my przeżywamy. Z tego kongresu na pewno wyjadę z takim podejściem i myślą, że nie mogę działać sama. Nie mogę, mimo tego, że mam dary, talenty od Boga, mam możliwości, to nie mogę robić tego sama i nie mogę ufać temu, temu co mam. Tylko muszę to wszystko zostawić i przyznać się do tego, że nic nie umiem, i umie tylko Bóg. Nie dzięki mojej mocy, nie dzięki mojej sile, ale dzięki duchowi to wszystko musi się stać. Hello, hello from Switzerland. Switzerland, you know, is a very small country just above Italy. We have here 7 million people and we have 70 ASI members in Switzerland. We speak four languages and it's a, quite a challenge to reach out and uh, we want to expand and make a difference here as ASI Switzerland and we ask for your prayers. We as a strategy decided to uh, reach out to our young people. That's why we produce this brochure here. As you can see, you know, we want to advertise our mission schools. We want to help the young people to decide to spend one year together with Christ in a mission school to find out God's will for their lives. So they come back and make a difference here in the churches, in the community. Did you know that we have eight mission schools in Europe? That's high potential. And maybe you need this brochure, you can contact me. And uh, this is our burden that we reach out to young people and we uh, hope that God's will 
can be done also in ASI Switzerland and in whole Switzerland. Thank you for your attention. Maranatha. Hi everyone. Um, I hope I'm hoping that this conference so far has been a blessing to you. Um, I have been able to hear some things myself and have been very blessed and I love the team for this year. What if we just ask? And I have also been asked to give you a, to share a little testimony. And I was thinking about it um, something what if we just ask? And in the time I've been here, I've been thinking what have I asked God? What was most important to me? And for those of you who do not know me, my name is Hannah and I'm 20 years old and right now I am in Southeast Asia. And I have been here for six months and in during those six months God has done a lot for me and for the people around me. But the most thing that I was very scared of and I really needed His help in was actually about making friends which seems very easy and something very silly but to me it was very important because in this country where we are this ministry is based on friendship and I am a person that makes friends very easily and very fast but most of the time those friendships don't go very deep and that is not what I wanted and when I came here I really started praying I was God I want a friend. I want a really close friend, even if it's just one. But I want to have that one person that I can work with. And I've been praying that for a very long time. And when I came here, it was very overwhelming. I've been teaching in a school. There are so many students. And suddenly I found myself surrounded by so many students. And it was hard to divide my attention. And I was going from one person to the other. and. I found myself struggling with creating deeper connections as I normally have. And I was really praying intense for it and one time I decided that I wanted to fast for it. And while I was fasting and praying, my plea was just to God, please manage my time. Give me an opportunity of creating this deeper friendship with one person. Right now, I am on holidays. And as I'm gone for one week, I have realized how much I miss my students. And I have realized that God has answered that prayer in a way I wasn't even aware of. Because I was gone for one day and suddenly I got a text of my friend saying, Teacher, I really miss you. Please come back. And it touched me so much. I was almost crying because I realized I have my group. I have five students with who I do so many things and we come together every Friday evening and they start Sabbath with us and we sing songs and we eat and they learn me the language. And I have just realized that God has answered my prayer already and I will not stop praying about it, but he has already answered it and I'm so grateful for that. And I hope there's also, in, I want to encourage you that whatever you are praying, it may seem right now that your prayer is not answered. But look again, think again, and ask God to open your eyes because He may have actually already answered that prayer. Hello, my name is Simon Janssen and we want to present our missionary work here in Germany. Greetings, lovely brothers and sisters. We are so thankful to be here together. My English is not so good, but I um, will give my best. I want to present our mission group. Uh, the name is Three Angels Mission Group. And we started here this group three years ago here in Hagen in Germany near of Dortmund and we started with a mobile bookshelf. Um, it's a mobile bookshelf where we have books on it um, that we can give to the people. All different books and there's a lot of um, 
we are seeing that the people are looking for this truth in this book that the people are longing for Jesus that they are longing to get to know what's really happening out there and what is behind the scenes and we have the answers we have um, we have the gospel we can give the people that what they really need today we are so thankful for it and we started here in Hagen and it's a mobile bookshelf you can go with this bookshelf everywhere it's not like a table you are mobile and that's uh, great advantages because you can move um, about different underground and all that stuff and it's built up and um, packed in five minutes so here you can see uh, we went in different churches over whole Germany and we after the, the Sabbath service we got out with the church to go to the people and to tell them about Jesus, what Jesus has done for us and give them these books, give them the DVDs. And here you see another group uh, here in Germany and it's always so big blessing with the children. They are so happy to go out, they are so happy to share, to give away the tracts and a lot of people come and want to have these books. And here you see we have started a, a mission week where we educated the people here in Hagen. It's a big tent and we have this Daniel statue. A lot of people came and we had a lot of contacts. It was so blessed time together here we are sitting and sharing testimonies after we went out after this mission week last year there was this church days in Dortmund over a hundred thousand Christians came there and we started there uh, with three mobile bookshelves and you see we were at different uh, points in the city and a lot of people came we prayed every morning together as a group of 10 people and we were from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the evening outside and the people came and came and a lot of books come to the people and we had so good conversations and contacts that we still treat um, after this event we are so thankful it was in total 2000 books that we gave to the people in five days there's a hungry uh, um, there's so lot of hungry and searching people out there so precious souls after that you, you see here also before the Westfalenhalle where we staying here with the three mobile bookshelves in the city and then God gave us another a good opportunity or possibility to get the three angels message to the people he gave us a tent 72 quadrat meters you see here it's um, it was a, a miracle how God gave us this tent and also this place it's in the city of Hagen. All what you see now is all from God. He has led us. He has given us um, the, the insight how we have to do this. And it was so a lot of organizing. And in this organizing, we experienced God's grace and God's strength so much. How he helped us to be able to have this tent evangelization and we had our first in 2018 and the second in two 2019 and 2018 it was 18 days 
and 2019 is 10 days. 2018 my missionary partner Esther had done the lectures and 2019 got laid on my heart that I, has, I have to do these lectures. Um, years, a few years ago I never had thought that I would stand in a tent to preach the three angels message because I was drug addicted and I had a lot of conflicts with my um, self-worth and I, I want to tell you when you believe when you believe that God can do great things then he will do this you can grow so much when you trust in God he will use you in a way you never imagine he can do and I experienced it in this 10 days it was really struggling but when I standing there and preach the gospel God gave me freedom he gave me the right words he gave me power and strength and he will this um, he will do this also for you when you trust him and we are so thankful that God can do this for us for his glory for his honor and we will encourage you to go forward he, in that what he his uh, what he shows you today that you will be steadfast and that you go forward in that what God has given you to do we have here this three angels mission group it's our YouTube channel yeah you can look it's it's in German but um, I think there are also German people on this Congress and we are so thankful that we can do this work and that's our contact our email address when you have questions when you want to have this bookshelf on this mobile bookshelf we have a blueprint we can send it to you so that you can also build a mobile bookshelf to go out to give the books uh, on a in a really easy way to the people and when you have further questions please ask and we will get in contact with you Thank you so much and God bless you. Amen. 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 Um, the Lord is doing wonderful things around the world and we praise him for that. At this moment of time, we're going to be heading into um, our devotion. Um, which Pastor Louis Torres will be uh, taking us on. Um, Pastor Louis Torres, if you're not too familiar uh, with who he is, he's the Vice President for the Adventist World Radio, an evangelist also, and also the co-founder with his wife of the Mission College of Evangelism. And he will be giving us um, this morning devotion. Um, over to you, uh, Pastor Torres. Thank you so much. As I have been sitting here watching uh, for the last uh, almost uh, 45 minutes, it's thrilling to see so many of my former students and uh, friends on the screen from Poland. And uh, it's wonderful to see people from Romania and uh, from uh, way up in Sweden and Norway and Finland and uh, UK. It's just amazing that this whole uh, system has brought us together from all parts. And for me, it's wonderful and thrilling to see what God is doing. Just to uh, give you my contact information, if you uh, have needs of sermons, you can find them on my YouTube channel, Lewis R. Make sure you have the R in the middle, Taurus. YouTube channel, and there you can find many sermons that I have presented that you can also share uh, with your cell phones, etc., to others. And so take advantage of that and pray that it'll be a blessing to you. There was a, uh, a diver, Olympic diver, 
who was not a believer. In fact, he was an atheist. And he uh, had a friend that he was very close with, but he was not happy that his friend was a Christian. And his Christian friend would constantly be preaching to him about his need of a savior, etc. But he didn't seem to have any interest in spiritual things. He just was glad for this uh, friendship that he had. And uh, one particular evening, he decided that he needed to go and practice his, his dive. And so it was evening, the street lights were on around the uh, facility, and the moon was shining bright. So he had just enough light that he could climb up the ladder to get up on the diving board and uh, take his dive. And so when the moment came, he stood just where he should, as this diver is doing, and then he opened up his arms as the divers do before they take their, their jump. And when he stretched his arms out, the moonlight actually cast a shadow in front of him. And what he saw was the sign of the cross. And that was it. All this time he had been fighting against what his friend was teaching him and telling him. And, but when he saw the sign of the cross, he could not resist any longer. So rather than taking his dive, he actually knelt down on the board and committed his life to the Lord. He decided to quit fighting, quit resisting, and yield to the reality that God was real. As he wept there and finally found the peace that God gives those who commit themselves to him, he once again got up uh, to go to take his jump. But while he was walking to the edge, all of a sudden the lights came on. The maintenance man came in to do the work that he needed to do. And in order to do it, he needed the lights on. Fortunately for the diver, when the lights came on, he could see down below that there was no water in the swimming pool. It had been drained for repair. The diver had not known that. And if it were not for the sign of the cross, that diver would have taken his last dive. Today, I'd like to share with you the topic, Watch the Signpost. But before we do that, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the signs that you give us. And we pray that you will help us today as we consider thy holy word again. In Jesus' name, amen. Watching the signpost. When uh, Jesus was with his disciples in Matthew chapter 24, in order to help them understand what he was talking about, he used the parable of the fig tree. He said, now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. It's interesting that as a young lad growing up in New York City, in the ghettos of New York, we uh, moved into a home, a house. The owner was an old Italian man, and we discovered that he loved figs. In fact, in the backyard, he had eight fig trees that he took well care of all the time, every year. He would wrap them up for winter time and unwrap them for summertime. And he knew when to unfold those uh, trees from their protection. And he always had the fix that he wanted to. He knew precisely this particular concept that when the fig tree begins to put forth leaf, you know that summer is coming. The sign. Now, today we have the plague, this pandemic plague that's going around. 
And um, the thing with this pandemic plague is that not only is it bringing uh, pain and suffering and misery to people and the loss of life, but it's also the subject of a lot of conspiracy theories. There are many, many Christians and many people who are trying to figure out what is this COVID-19 all about? And so they have different conspiracies about, well, it's Donald Trump or she or somebody else, Bill Gates. There's so many conspiracies flying. And the, the unfortunate thing is that many of our people are getting caught up with conspiracy issues to the extent that they become divided. Now, I have come across people who have been so caught up with conspiracy issues uh, that it doesn't matter what you tell them about the truth. They can't accept the truth. There, when I was in Australia recently, there was a, a man who believed that the earth is flat and that there was a conspiracy uh, involved with teaching that the world was round. And no matter what you try to do to explain to that man that the world is round, because I travel quite often and I can see the horizons uh, on the front of the plane, no matter what you say to them, it didn't matter. He was caught up so much with the conspiracy theory that he wouldn't believe anything else. And so conspiracy issues have also divided church members. Some think it's this and some think it's that. The unfortunate thing about that is that this conspiracy becomes like a decoy. Now, you know what a decoy is. For example, right here I have what is called a mallard duck beautiful duck and colorful. And so here's the mylar duck and here's another duck. But this other duck is not a duck. That is, it's really not a real duck, but it's made to look so much like the real duck that it can deceive even a duck. In fact, they're used to allure other ducks uh, when hunting. Now, the, can you tell the difference between this duck and this duck? Well, it's very difficult. But just to let you know, this is a live duck. This is actually a real live duck. And this duck is a decoy. You can see the resemblance and how easy it is for a live duck to be allured to this duck. And so decoys become a deterrent, especially for Christians. And I believe, friends, that what's happening with this whole pandemic is that the enemy is using it to bring distraction to our people from what Jesus has said. Now, you may say, well, how is that? Well, let's consider it. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to show him uh, the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, notice then that the disciples request something. They ask for something. Tell us. They're asking. When shall these things be? And what shall it be? the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Now, I want you to notice something important here. The disciples didn't say, uh, what's behind all of this? The disciples wanted to find out the specifics of how they could determine when what Jesus said would happen, would happen. So they asked for the sign of his coming and for the sign of the end of of the world. They requested a sign, and Jesus then began to point to the signs. Now, why point to signs? Because signs, generally speaking, point forward. They lead you forward. I've been on the roads in Romania, I've been in the roads of Hungary, and I've been in the roads of Poland, and I've been in the roads of Germany, especially the uh, Audubon where you feel like you're just sitting there as cars just zip by you. 
uh, in England, on the wrong side of the, the road, as some would say, in France, in Spain, in Portugal. I've been to all those countries, in Switzerland. And I'm glad for the signs, because the signs tell you what's ahead and uh, how to get where you want to go. This particular sign here is at, in uh, California. And it's telling us that San Francisco and the Bay Bridge is this way and San Rafael and Sacramento is that way. And so signs point forward. However, conspiracies or speculations are open-ended. In other words, you can't prove them or you cannot disprove them. When somebody throws out a conspiracy issue to you, uh, you can sit there amazed at the information that they have been able to 